Hi team, I hope you're all really well. My, <laughs> oh dear. My wisdom tooth has decided to make a move, um, make a run for it, break free of the gums, however you wanna say it. So I am speaking with a slight lisp because it's been hurting quite a lot and I've been trying to not move my mouth quite as much in terms of opening it really wide when talking and eating etc. So I have developed a slight lisp. I must say I'm actually quite enjoying it. It gives you a completely different perspective on life. Uh, you have to really think about what you're saying, how you're saying it. Sometimes when someone asks you a question, just like now and I've had to put all those S's together, you have to re-say a lot of things, uh, a lot slower and louder. <laughs> which is very interesting but it's fine I'm getting there I think uh, today is a Monday and it started making its move last Thursday well Wednesday Thursday so hopefully I'm towards the end of it now I keep checking it every day to see how much more of the tooth is left to come out and I do think it's the last few days so hopefully by <laughs> Thursday this week I will be back to normal. This is so crazy because I know when I edit this, I'm just going to be looking at myself like, wow, what did you even say? <laughs> Probably going to need to add in subtitles or something. But anyway, I am back sewing again, which is great. I'm smiling loads because I'm really enjoying it again. And I have changed my sewing room around once again. I think the setup that I have now, I'm really enjoying a lot more. It has a much more easier workspace flow. I think before how I had it set up, it was really good in terms of displays and things like that. But now the workflow is a lot easier. And I think I have said several, several times is that I was cutting a lot of my fabrics on the floor, which was really bad for my knees. Um, just to give a bit of context, a good couple years ago now, I would say close to maybe four years ago, I was running home from work one evening and I crashed into a cyclist and I almost fell over on the floor but I didn't but I banged my knee quite hard into the bicycle and then I carried on running for those of you that live in London the context of the distance was from Covent Garden to Clapham North station so that's quite far in terms of miles I don't know exactly but it's quite a lot of miles and it wasn't until I stopped at the Clapham North station that I really then felt my knee felt really different and it swelled up but I ended up chipping some cartilage in my knee and then some of the fat sacks that go around your knee and your knee joint to help protect it they've all been dislodged I've had to go through physiotherapy and everything my knee is a lot better now but in terms of kneeling and putting a lot of pressure on it it is not a fan of that at all so cutting things out on a wooden floor is very difficult even though I did try and put cushioning and everything underneath my knee to protect it as much as possible. I did the physiotherapy to strengthen my knee which is fine the strength in my knee is there but in terms of the pain and the fact that the fact that fat sacks <laughs> have moved around it means that sometimes they sit in different positions and it just is achy and you know just general wear and tear of life so that's what is the biggest problem with my knee it's nothing like life threatening or anything like that but I just uh, you know I'm still I'm still young even though people don't like to always tell me that I am whether they're saying it as a joke or seriously so I would like to keep my knees as as long as I can so that's that story the biggest thing that I really love about my sewing room now is that I've got this makeshift ikea desk honestly I, I cannot go on enough about how much i like ikea which you might be surprised about because i do go on about it a lot <laughs> but i just got some clax box um square boxes like the old school ones i've had before the two by twos and i've just turned them into a makeshift desk the inspiration for it came from watching lots of random videos uh in the time that i was off the story girls and all their diys i mean their ideas are quite something and it really just made me start to look at all the furniture that I had differently which was really good because then it meant that I wasn't going out and spending more money and then actually demonstrated to me that probably I had some bits of furniture that I didn't really need anymore so there was a desk that I had that I'm going to be getting rid of and a few other bits and stuff as well so I now have this the tabletop isn't secured down to anything but it's fine for now I just out of laziness more than anything I just haven't secured it to the tops but as time goes by I'm sure I will 
get on and do that but that's the best thing about it because I now can stand up and cut out patterns but then it just gives me that extra bit of actual workspace to be able to plan out different things as well because I've got quite a few little bits up my sleeve to be done I've got a ton of fabric which is all in the fabric walls over there to start working with and I've got all some actual projects that are just down there on the floor that you can see <laughs> poking out their head there are two piles of fabrics that I am aiming to get all made up into beautiful beautiful clothes and everything as soon as possible so back to my big beaming smile in conjunction with looking at my furniture slightly differently it has then freed my mind to look at my patterns again more differently than what I would do otherwise and I just think overall I'm just in a much better headspace so my head is a lot clearer and I'm not stressing myself out about like oh my gosh you have to make a shift dress and it has to look specifically like this I'm being a lot more freer again and just exploring with different things and just thinking in my mind if I want to make a certain thing then you just make it and then if I need to buy a new fabric to buy to make something else at a later date then that's just what you have to do you know you can't hold on to everything sometimes you just have to try something and see if it works and if it doesn't then try something else and, and that's fine you know it's just about enjoying the process and not stressing yourself out about making everything super super perfect that was a bit of a note to myself <laughs> as well as to anybody else who might need it at this point in time at the minute i like i said i'm working through all the different um fabric stacks that i have a fabric that i've had sitting around for years maybe a couple months i've had ideas of things to do that i haven't done <sighs> take a breath so today I am going back to trying to make a shirt so my saga of shirts has improved so I'm no longer scared of buttonholes I can do them but the spacing on the buttonholes has been my uh, little weakness let's say but my dear friends on the interweb hi guys thank you very much all suggested that I get a sewing gauge and guess what I did I recently got myself a sewing gauge so I'm very looking forward to using this so I'm gonna try it out I already know this Whoa. Ow! Ow, 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 ow! Ow! My knee is really sore, but it's okay. It's only a small cut. I'm going to use this Vogue pattern that's 8855 to make a viscose blouse depending on whether I do it long sleeve or short sleeve depends on how much fabric I have to be able to make the pattern view a has the option to do it with piping which I might do depending on if I have any piping or any kind of nice ribbon to go with the blouse but I think mostly I'm going to aim to try and do it just in plain and then use this handy sewing gauge to be able to measure out my buttonholes more accurately starting from the widest bust part which is another tip that my friends on the internet told me about thank you thank you for being part of the team the only other thing that i've done i'll update you on really quickly because you'll see it pop up in my sewing vlogs probably for the next little while until i can do the next stage is that I have stripped down my sewing form so if any of you have been around for a little while you'll know that it was blue and I probably mentioned in several sewing vlogs ago that it was my intention to recover it in some way shape or form the blue fabric that was on top of the dress form underneath it had foam and because it's, the dress form has been around for years and years and years the foam has started to disintegrate and was just shedding on the floor and it was just really messy and anytime you touched it you would just come away with like shedded foam on your person so i just pulled it all off hoovered it all down and everything and then just gonna start the process of recovering it and yes and then once i stripped it off i realized that you could actually what continue to wind the wheels on to make it wider so that the measurements of it are more precise to what my body measurements are which is great and has already been a big help in fitting other styles wow i have talked quite a lot so i'm gonna give my old wisdom tooth a bit of a break and get cracking with this vogue sewing pattern i will see you guys again really soon Bye.